our darkness game review. Andy's your average young boy. He loves his dog, Whiskey. No jokes. And what happens is one day Whiskey gets captured. Andy is, of course, heartbroken, but he's not quite helpless. He's quite the little inventor. So when he rushes back from school, he heads to his treehouse and goes after Whiskey in his spacecraft. It doesn't take him long to get to the realm of the darkness, which is evidently where Whiskey has been taken, but he crashes and he has to get the rest of the way on foot. And this is where the game begins. You run around as this kid with an energy ray weapon and you fight darkness. You fight shadows. Literally, some of the first enemies that attack you are the shadows on the cliff faces, excuse me. And yeah, I'm not going to give away how you actually fight them, but basically it is entirely black and white. You have this innocent little kid fighting shadows and dark creatures. In addition to just plain shadows, you fight child-sized black creatures with glowing green eyes. Some of them are really thin, some of them are fat, and they're going to come at you in great amounts, and you have to take them all out or run in the opposite direction. You meet other imaginative creatures, including essentially man-sized bats, sort of, but more pleasant looking. And you fight your way through these cliffs, there's a forest, and eventually you make it to the lair. The story is not bad. It's got a kind of... There's... It, it is basically just you know, black and white. You have the good guys fighting the bad guys. I wish I could go into a lot of detail, but frankly, the game does not have subtitles, and it's always lag for me, so I can never, during the cutscenes, so I can never, pay, you know, pick up what they're saying. Just the basic gist of it, just these guys fighting these guys. I don't think it's terribly deep, though. And basically the game is a side-scrolling kind of... The camera is, you know, at, at your side and basically you constantly... Each screen has some something to get through. It's like, you know, Prince of Persia 1 and 2. You know, but way back from 89 and 92. And that's basically it. You fight your way through all of these areas. Sometimes you shoot enemies, sometimes you run and get past puzzles. There's a lot of quick reactions necessary, you know, reflexes. You have to jump from place you can climb to another place you can climb, and maybe, just maybe, there is someone following you, shooting at you, or some natural phenomena like lava, shooting towards you, or sometimes blocking the path of your jump, so you have to time it right or you will die. And that's one thing I really like about this game. You, you die. Constantly, basically. It's like in the old Commander Keen games. Get hit once, you're dead. Just like that. No 
you know, no extra chance or something. You don't have a limited set of lives, though, so you'll always just, you know, start over at that screen or a couple of screens earlier, whenever it last saved. And also, when you quit the game, you can jump back to that exact screen that it last saved at. But basically, there's no room for mistakes. Every task, every time you get from one checkpoint to another, you don't get to be hit at all during that time. And what I've described so far might sound cutesy, and you know, like a little kid going after his dog. Trust me, the deaths are not cute. They're pretty brutal and disturbing, actually. You'll see him get torched by lava, you know, you'll see him get swallowed whole. There is at least some blood in the game, but mainly it's violence and disturbing content. And the graphics are... they're okay, but I think the real problem is that the resolution is really strangely small, so everything looks pixelated. I don't know why they did this. Otherwise, it would look good, but instead it just looks like, you know, when you find a video online and you try to bring it up to a too high resolution, you, know, you try to make it full screen when it's, like, not that, you know, not that high of a resolution. So everything looks pixelated. The puzzles are good, and there are definitely some real brain teasers in there, but Really, once you've completed it once, you've done everything there is to do. There are no unlockables. The only thing that's really, that really offers any kind of replayability is the fact that there are three difficulty settings. And this really just determines how many enemies there are when you shoot enemies. As far as I've been able to tell, there is no change to any of the other puzzles. The puzzles are the way they are. <coughs> Excuse me. And there's only one solution to each. Basically, you know, there's not a lot of room for leeway. There's not, there's not a lot of room for mistake. Basically, you have to do it a pretty certain way, and once you figure it out that way, as long as you don't forget that, you're going to be able to do that, you know, fine. Just th the next time. So, the game does not have a lot of replayability. The score is pretty good, and there are some relatively memorable characters. It's a French game, so it's that kind of wacky kind of style of humor. You know, if you've seen... Emily is probably the most... You know, the one that the most people have seen. It's that kind of strange humor sometimes. The Lord of Darkness is... This big... this isn't a spoiler because you see him at the end of the first chapter. Basically a big human humanoid creature with red eyes. You never see him quite clearly. Like you see the silhouette or you see... you know he's always covered in darkness of course. And he has this second-in-command goon kind of guy who's this pink tubby little guy with a an elephant's... crap, I don't know what that word is in English, but, you know, the nose. The trunk, maybe. And... yeah. And he basically, he fails a lot, you know. There are a couple of other recurring characters. I am not really going to give any of them away, but... You know, you can remember the characters apart. There's no... They don't look too alike, and their personalities are sufficiently different. But it really is not a game that's about, you know, character development or growth or such, you know. It's, it's a fun little game. It should take you at least some hours to complete, but afterwards you might not touch it again. So, and I suppose that is about 
it. So if you're interested in, you know, fantasy and the whole good versus evil struggle, you know, imaginative, imaginative creatures, and just good old-fashioned action-adventure gaming, rent. Maybe not buy. So yeah, that is my review of Heart of Darkness. I hope you enjoyed it. I'll see you next time.